Okay, so this is question number 11 of the Nuclear Physics Homework Booklet. So in question number 11, we start we start off and we're asked to calculate the radius of this uranium uh, nucleus. And we're told that R0 is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. Well, there's only really one way we can do this. We use this equation here that tells us that the radius of the nucleus is equal to that constant multiplied by a to the third, where a is basically the... Um, a is basically the mass number of this thing, so it's 238. So we put this into our equation, so that's the R0 from up here. This is 238 to the power of a third, and simply putting that on your calculator, it gives you 8.1 times 10 to the minus 15 metres. You get one mark for putting the right numbers in, one mark for the right answer. In part B, we're then told that um, we're now thinking about gamma rays. So as soon as we think about gamma rays and distances, which is the, what the question is asking us about, the first thing we need to think about is the inverse square law. So in terms of the details of the question, we're told that at a distance of 30 millimetres from a source of gamma rays, the corrected count rate is C. So after we take into account background radiation, then the count rate is C. We're asked to calculate the distance from the source at which the corrected count rate is 0.1c, in other words, 10% of what it was to start off with, assuming that there's no absorption and things like that. So to look at the inverse square law, we, we use this equation here. So what this tells us is that the intensity or the count rate at one place is equal to some constant divided by the distance squared. And we can write exactly the same equation down for um, a new count rate and a new intensity. So imagine that this is at the first place where the count rate is C and the distance is 30 millimetres. When we move this move away from the source, the new count rate will be equal to the same constant divided by the new distance squared. So we can rearrange these and we can say that K is equal to I1 times X1 squared and that k is also equal to i2 times x2 squared. Now the k is obviously the same k, so that basically means that i1 times x1 squared is i2 times x2 squared. So then we just need to put our numbers and, well, and the information we've got in. So the count rate at the first place is just c. We'll keep the distance in millimetres, because provided the two distances are in the same units, then that's fine. So um, we've got 30 squared is equal to 0.1c, times x2 squared. So if we rearrange this, we get our new distance x2 but squared is equal to this, so it's equal to c times 30 squared divided by 0.1c. The c's cancel out, which gives us basically 30 squared over 0.1, which gives us 9,000. We then, but that's equal to the distance squared. Um, we simply square root 9,000, which gives us 94.9, which is essentially 95 millimetres. So in terms of two marks, basically, if you try and use this equation um, here, then you get one mark for attempting to use the inverse square law properly. You get one mark for the right answer. Um, in part C, we're then told that the activity of a source of particles falls to 80% of its initial value in 52 seconds. And we're asked to calculate the decay constant of the source. So we use the only thing we can really use if we're talking about time and um, count rates and activities falling is the exponential equation. So the activity is equal to the starting activity multiplied by e to the minus lambda t, where lambda is our decay constant and t is the time. So um, we, we're told that in 52 seconds, uh, this source of radiation falls to 85% of its value. So the starting value is A0, so 85% of the A0 is 0 0.85 A0. So that's our 85% of the starting rate. That's equal to the starting rate multiplied by e to the minus lambda, which is what we want to find out, multiplied by 52, because that was the time up here. If we rearrange this, then we get e to the minus 52 lambda is 0 0.85, take natural logs of both sides, gives us this equation here, and then in the end, um, so minus 52 lambda is equal to minus 0.1625, etc. So lambda is equal to that number divided by 50, minus 52. So lambda is equal to 3.1 times 10 to the minus 3 per second. Again, in terms of uh, marks, you basically get one mark for using this for right, using this equation correctly, so basically putting the numbers in here, one mark for basically taking the natural logs and rearranging it, and then one mark for the correct answer. 
And then finally in D, we're asked to explain. So we have to say why um, the isotope of technetium, so this thing, 99TC with this little M on it, is chosen as a suitable source for radiation for use in medical diagnosis. So what as, as soon as we see this little M, what that tells us is that this thing is an isotope which has metastable states. So that's the thing where basically um, if it's an excited nucleus, then it can stay excited actually for quite a long time. So it's it's not stable, but it's almost stable. So it'll stay excited for quite a long time before it emits a gamma ray and drops down to its ground state. So, it, so this thing we know just by looking at this is a gamma ray emitter. So the reason it's using medical diagnosis is because it only emits gamma radiation. It doesn't emit alpha and beta, which are really, really ionizing. You can detect it outside of your body. Um, it doesn't ionize very much because it's gamma. Um, technetium's got a fairly short half-life, so it doesn't remain in the body for a long time. And it has a long enough half-life that it remains active during the medical procedure. So these two things are things that um, if you really went into detail and did lots of revision for, then um, you would you would know, but the, the three main ones, the three easiest ones to remember, provided you remember this is a gamma emitted, then these three things follow naturally. So you basically have one mark for any of these five points up to a maximum of three. So that was question number 11 of the nuclear homework booklet.